Hey guys, welcome back to the next episode of Inaz Motors. As you saw in the last video, we got the whole car painted. And we've also sent all the suspension bits back out to get upgraded for hard race rebush. So we'll be now heading back to the paint shop with the remaining panels and getting them painted. I'll see you there. Okay, we're back at the paint shop now. We've got all the panels in the booth, ready to go. This is the first lot. Got the rear doors, the lip, the grill, door handles, a couple of moldings, battery tray, and we've got the brake calipers as well. We'll be getting that custom coated with the blue and we've already got it heat primed, so it's all good to go. Let's get this started. We've now got the last batch done for the night. So we've got the trim here that goes above the doors on the frame. We've got these trims here that go on the side of the doors. We've got another set of trims that goes above the door for the window sets. We've got the wiper arms, the windscreen tray, and we've got the brake booster. There you guys have it, let's move on. We're now back at the workshop. As you saw in the last couple of clips, we painted all the panels for this car. We've currently got both front guards just hooked onto the car, along with the windscreen tray, so they don't get scratched. A few more bits kept inside. And we've also got both rear doors fully assembled and aligned. Looking very good. Let's now move on to the next step. We've got the front half of the suspension back. So I'll show you what we've done. Here is the front half of the suspension. Let's have a look at all the parts. So we've got the white line front sway bar link kit for an EGDC subframe that comes with the hardware. They've got the DB ADA subframe, which is the same as the DC2 with the lower control arms that has been rust coated. We've got the hard race front LCA bushes that have been present on the arms along with the uh, compliance bush at the back that I'll show you later on. We've got the front DC2 SIR steering rack that was rebuilt at Perona Power Steering in North Shore. We've supplied them the hard race brackings and tower ends. And we've also got the hard race steering rack bush kit, as you can see. We've got the front knuckles here. They have been rust coated as well. And we've got the hard race extended studs that have been installed along with the Honda Genuine wheel bearing on both of them. And we've also got a hard race roll center correction ball joint that has been installed. Now you have to get a new bearing put in if you have to do the studs. We've got the brake calipers painted, as you saw. We've got the front Skunk 2 Pro Series camera arm kit. Now for the Pro Series, you can see the hex keys are actually facing at the bottom. That way it makes it easier for us to do an alignment on the car. So these are probably the best set you can buy. And there you guys have it. We've got the old parts here, just to show you guys that everything has been swapped. And we'll be now installing all of this onto the car. Let's go. We've now got the subframe installed on the car. Let's have a look. Here is the sway bar with the link kit. Now it is an adjustable sway bar, but we'll just put it on the inside setting for now, just so we can get everything mounted. And here is the hard race compliance bush that I mentioned earlier. 
and there's one bolt missing for the subframe on this side. We do have the other one, so we'll just hand tighten that, and we'll be using that as a sample to get it matched up for the other side. This is what it looks like. Now, when you guys use a EGDC subframe for an EK chassis case swap, make sure you guys have the hardware because all these bolts are different lengths. That will make your life a lot easier to get this installed. Let's move on. We've now got the engine installed in the bay. All we did was put this motor in box on a flat pallet on the ground and then we lowered the car and the post mount and the gearbox mount pretty much lined up. Now you have to tighten the post mount bracket on the chassis rail because you can't tighten it once the motor goes in but you can leave the transmission side loose so you can wiggle it around and then the rear mount will line up straight away as well. The only other issue we had was this post mount bracket that's on the actual motor. So that one we use a CIV bracket and then realized it's too long in length and that's meant for a K24 swap. And because we got a K20, we had to use a DC5 bracket. We've also got a Honda Genuine AC delete plug back there. And what we actually forgot is to do a uh, speed factory detailing spring upgrade, which is underneath this mount. So there's three trombo bolts in there. You remove, there's a spring in there and then you swap them over. So we've got that done as well. And here is the old ones. There's a part number. There you go. Now it's time to patch up. We'll get that started. Now, as you can see, we've got a lot of things installed inside the engine bay. Let's have a look at some of the parts. We've got the K-tuned power string and AC delete kit along with the alternator relocation bracket. Now we've actually seen the alternator out for a rebuild. Once that comes back, we can patch up all of the side. We've got a brand new starter motor installed as well and a couple of plugs are um, already wired in. Now let's talk about the uh, harnesses. We've got a CL7 charge harness that we'll be using for this build and for the engine harness we'll be using a DC5 um, type of harness. Now with the CL7 harness as you can see this long plug here, this is actually on the other end of this uh, wiring loom in the CL7. So we have to cut the loom open and rewrite it back here and plug it in because on the DC5 it plugs in right here. Um, with the bigger plug here, we had a female fitting on the CL7 and also a female fitting on the um, engine harness as well. So we had to cut and resold the wires with the male plug and this literally just plugged in. They're the same colored wires, just a different plug. This is all good to go. Let's move on to the next one. So we've got the VSS um, sensor here. Again, uh, different plugs from the DC5 to the CL7. Uh, we just had to deepen this and repin it using a different plug and that was good to go. Same with the crank angle sensor, exact same thing deep in and re -pin, and that way we completed our engine harness. Now we've tried to tuck it as much as we can towards the engine as you can see and we've got it routed all the way from here into that tunnel in the cabin. Now with the charge harness exact same thing this is the battery um, connector for the CL7 we've got the two wires put into the fuse box factory location as you can see we'll be um, removing this and putting a 2 to 1 connector and then having that one fitting and the wire run through the same location into the tunnel here. And that's pretty much all the wiring done. Now let's have a look at the fuel well here with the hybrid racing fuel well. Now, a lot of people put the gauge on the pressure regulator, but I've decided to put the gauge on the rail itself to get a better reading. And we've gone for the tucked um, line. So we actually got a fitting here that the box doesn't come with. And we've run the line from underneath the intake manifold through here. As you can see, there's a filter there as well underneath and then that runs to the regulator. So from here, you've got the inlet coming in here and then you got the return going back down and then that's the inlet for the fuel rail. So that's a hybrid racing fuel pressure rig all done. We also got the hybrid racing um, throttle cable all wired up from down here for now. It's just hanging there. We have to still put the booster and the master in. So this is all just pretty much a mock-up. We'll be deciding um, where we want to run it from above or below the booster so for now we'll just leave it as is we've also got the chase base um, clutch line right here and we've uh, uh, tried to tuck that as well in the middle so it doesn't touch anything and it's all been mounted nicely we've also got the bc golds all mounted as you can see now we've also got the k-tuned um, heater core hoses the prefit ones but um we actually didn't realize that because we're running a dc2 subframe um, the hoses are about an inch shorter so we'll be getting a fitting to uh, make that work 
because the motor sling a lot more forward than they would using a EKK2 mounted which that was initially designed for so let's um, take this car up and I'll show you a few more things underneath here is the bottom of the car everything patched up we've got a brand new set of Remza ultrasonic brake pads for the front brand new set of BC Golds as I mentioned now these are for the EG Civic but it's the same as a DC and the EK I'll show you the differences later on we've got the EG DC fork for the EG and DC arm, which is a little bit skinnier compared to the EK. Only other issue we uh, ran across was the sway bar hitting this frame here. So what we did was I uh, ended up making a five mil plate spacer for this. So we put the D-bish on and then that gave us a clearance for the frame. With the shifter link, we've uh, managed to put it through the factory O2 sensor hole that goes through. So this was initially, uh, I think, the 30 mil. So we used the hole saw, made it uh, bigger to a 40 mil and then ran the cables through fit it nicely and as you can see there's a bit of a gap so we'll just be getting a four tape covering all of this so none of the heat goes into the cabin once the exhaust is on and this is what it looks like once the whole front end has been patched up we'll see you guys next time